Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, we say this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. As we begin today's Bible study, let's take a moment to dedicate this session to God with the word of prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you. Yes. We open our hearts to receive your word, yes. your leading, your guidance. Yes. We yield ourselves, King of glory, because without you we are without effect. Yes. Reign in us, King of glory. Yes. We step aside. Yes, that you might take your place yes, to reach out and change hearts yes, and reconcile them to the kingdom. Yes, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor, and the power, and all the worship yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. There are several questions we meet when we are on the mission field. And some of them come up so frequently, especially those that deal with the devil and what his destiny will be. Questions like, can the devil repent? What is the source of all evil in the world? Is everything about the devil? Remember several years ago, within media, there was this cliche, the devil made me do it. And often it caught up. And for many people, if we are not careful, whereas we know that the devil is the root of all evil, Evil has various channels through which it comes to us. And part of it is due to the decisions that we make as humans. Because every one of us has the will and has the power to choose. And these are decisions that come from the heart. So let's get into today's word and unveil to us answers to the question, some of the questions that you and I have encountered in life. Concerning the destiny of the devil. We take our reading today. From the book of Revelation. Chapter 20. From verse 7 to verse 10. This is what the Bible says. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison. And he will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog. To get to gather them together to battle. Whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. 
Blessed be the word of the Lord. In these few verses, we have so much to see from there. Previously, we saw that the time will come when an angel will be released from heaven. And this angel will come with a chain and the key to the abyss or the bottomless pit. And this angel Malaiko, not the troop of angels, this one angel Malaiko, will arrest Satan. And we don't see any battle there. The Bible gives us the account that one angel with the keys in one hand, with a chain, is going to arrest the devil. Lay hold of him. Put him in the bottomless pit. Shut him there and seal the door. Because the pit is bottomless, the devil will continue going down and down and down for the next 1,000 years. In other words, he's not coming back on earth again for this period. So you, we will have a period on earth where the devil will not be present. He will be shut and sealed in the bottomless pit. Take note of that. And those 1,000 years, we saw last week that those that were murdered for the gospel those that were faithful with the works of Christ to the end they will sit on thrones and judge nations and this will be for a period of a thousand years now after this has happened then the devil will be released. But let me jot back to the thousand years. This is what the Bible talks about in Isaiah. They will be years of peace. In Isaiah 2, the Bible tells us that they shall beat their swords with peace plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and men shall make war no more. So it is a case of men, mankind, getting all the weapons of warfare and converting them to useful service to the benefit of humanity. So today when you look around and see nations piling up their arsenals of weaponry, they don't have an understanding of what is going to happen. Because the time is coming when these weapons will be useless. And now the whole agenda will be on how to convert these weapons of destruction. And turn them into weapons of use. And turn them into tools that benefit humanity. And this will happen in the millennial reign. But after their thousand years, the Bible says the devil will be freed. And he that led 
angels into rebellion. Now will go again. This time, doing the same thing that he did before. Remember in the beginning, he led angels to rebel. Then he came to mankind in the garden and led him to rebel against God. Through what? Deception. Now he is right now as we speak. Deceiving men, deceiving women, deceiving nations, leading them into rebellion to what God has placed as his channel of grace to bring redemption. The Bible says the God of his word has blinded their eyes. He has blinded their minds so that they cannot see the light of the glory of Christ Jesus. That is what he is doing right now. Now when he is captured and placed into the bottomless pit where he is not having any influence for a thousand years it would look that this would be the moment of reflection. One thousand years will be given to him. To reflect upon what he has done. But after a thousand years, the Bible says, when he is released, he goes back to the same agenda that he had before, deceiving nations. Now here we see the antagonists of Israel coming to join him. Here we see two words used, Gog and Magog. Which takes us back to Ezekiel chapter 38. And chapter, chapter 39. That's where we, will, we see Gog and Magog coming through. These were nations that were against Israel as a nation. When the devil is released, he goes back to the same agenda to gather men and women, to gather nations for war. And they are numbering, the Bible says, they are as many as the sons on the shore. So the multitudes that we gather, the Bible says they are going to be annihilated by the fire that comes from the mouth of God. So again we see, we don't see any protracted battle here. Sense of God, I want you to understand this. We have for so long created a platform for the enemy. We have bought into his lies concerning his capabilities. But when you read the scriptures with an open mind, you get to understand that this will not be so. Even when he is released and he gathers for battle with all the weapons at his disposal, they will still be fruitless in terms of outcome. I will call a politician in Uganda who made the statement and said if Jesus was arrested and then killed by people with spears, Singa, Singa, yes, we are so quiet. We are not, 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 we are
mafumu. How about the one we have some machine guns? Now that arrogance and ignorance is what is going to be dealt with here. Because when they gather, they think they have the weapons to be able to wage war. But all their weapons are rendered important. Because just a breath from heaven is enough to annihilate every one of them. To destroy all the forces of wickedness. But let me take you back. What happens during this millennial reign? Here the Bible tells us that Jesus will rule. He will reign with the, with the saints on earth. And that's exciting. But the Bible says he will reign with the rod of iron. In other words, there will be a standard. And that standard cannot be broken, it cannot be mended, it cannot be shaken, it cannot be turned. The point is God has not changed his standards. He will not bring them down. He will maintain his standard for holiness. His standard for righteousness has never changed. The righteous, the Works of men cannot bring us to that level. That righteousness only comes through faith in Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So without God's help, with only our strength, we cannot measure up to God's standard. And by standard, there are so many standards. I'm talking about righteousness and holiness. This is what the Bible tells us in Isaiah 64.6. When he talks about our righteousness outside of God, it says they are like filthy rags. So back to the text that we just saw. We see something very significant here. The enemy of our souls, the devil who has been taken away captive and put away for a thousand years. And this has a purpose. It serves the purpose to show us that most of the evil originates from the devil. And because he's taken away a thousand years, we see a different picture emerging on earth. We see the absence of war to such a point that we had talked about that weapons of mass destructions are turned into tools of use. But then looking at the same text, through the lens of Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 4, I want you to say something here. Whereas, yes, there will be a turnaround, tools of mass destruction, tools of warfare are going to be used as tools of agriculture, as tools to help people improve their lifestyle. 
wadenge because it's not in the Yokuruan, Abagenda Vichu, Sama because it's a Mukuyamba and Tokuy Yungida. The first part of Isaiah chapter two and verse four. It's two next so come Sula Isaiah Sula Yoko Yoni say something very interesting. What would you like? It says, and he will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. So, whereas the devil is locked away, still disputes will emerge amongst the peoples on the earth. There will still be conflict. That is why God's standard has to reign. So you may ask, why would there be disputes? You see, although peace is reigning, there will still be disputes, and this points to another origin of evil. Satan is locked away. So where is all this evil that is bringing conflict? It is the human heart. The heart that is not transformed. That in itself by nature is evil. Look at what as Jeremiah tells us. In Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. He says the heart of man is deceitful. Above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see, an unregenerated heart is a storehouse of evil. So, even with the devil upset, if your heart is not regenerated, evil will still spring out of that heart. That's the point God wants to drive home during this period. That is the reason why salvation is a necessity for everyone. Because with Without salvation, then the heart cannot be regenerated. Without salvation, then we cannot meet God's standard. And this salvation is by faith in the accomplished work of Jesus Christ at Calvary. That's what changes lives. That's what changes perspectives. That is what moves the heart that is filled with sin to be purified. That is where God comes to us in Isaiah and says, come, let's reason together. He is not engaging you into an argument or a discussion. The reason is for you to see your faith self. And then look at what he has to offer. That's why he comes and says, though your sins be as scarlet. He says they shall be washed. That is the whole essence of salvation. You come impure and live with the purity of God. You live empowered to live holy just as he who called you is holy. Your nature changes. The nature of sin is substituted. You now have the nature of righteousness. And the life of God then empowers you 
to live not for yourself but to live for God. So here in the scriptures we see that everyone needs salvation. And without salvation, number one, we are helpless. Number two, you are hopeless. Helpless in other words that there is no redemption, there is nowhere you can turn to. Because redemption has come. And you have rejected it. Hopeless because you don't have a future. You have nothing to live for. That's why we shout about salvation. Because in Christ Jesus, we have hope. Our future is secure. Both now and forevermore. Hallelujah. And we thank God for that. So, looking at it again, why the millennium? Why does Jesus have to come? Number one, I told you. So that he looks out the devil. That's what we see here. But two, to show us that the prime source of evil is the devil. But to also to show us that there is another source of evil which is the human heart. But all of that find restitution, find help in Jesus Christ. The third thing is what we see the devil now set free. Why does God allow the devil to be set free? It's not that he doesn't know what he's capable of doing. But he wants to demonstrate to you and I one, that he's a just God. One time I met somebody who asked me a question. He said, can the devil repent? And the answer to that question is here. For a thousand years, he will be locked up giving him a thousand years to contemplate upon the life that he has lived. All the masses of God. A thousand years he is contemplating on what he has done from the very beginning. The fall of the angels. The fall of man. The deceit of humanity throughout the ages. To now the point that he is incarcerated. And after a thousand years, God allows him to be freed. After a thousand years of reflection, the Bible says it goes to the four corners of the earth, deceiving nations. That tells you that the devil is beyond repentance. He knows only one thing. He does only one thing to deceive, to destroy. So anyone who thinks that the devil is your friend, you are mistaken. A devil is not like a dog that you can tame and make domestic. No, no, no. He is your adversary. He is your opponent. He is your enemy. You see, forget the cliches that we have. 
Wela video bigambo bino bino nabe tukozesa. Better the devil you know. Tiyadeko sitani gwe goma nyi. You don't know him. Yumani. Look at it. Wete giriza. After a thousand years of contemplation. Nga amazo kwe miaka lukumi okufumi itiriza. We don't see him being contrite. Tomula banga ye kubye mutima na de. We see him come back and do even worse knowing that his time is nigh. Ate wako mawa kole na dala mubi kubanga manyaka sera katonu. He goes to the at most parts of the earth. Na agenda buli nsonda zoneze. Brings everyone that has not known conflict for a thousand years. Na kunganya abantu amaze miaka lukubi nga teba manjina antaro chichi. They have taken the weapons, made them into farm tools. Evyo kura insababi fula nkumbi kulima. Now he lies them to get them back and convert them back to weapons. Na aga feda na aga limba neba mugobele da evyo kura insaneba wifula atene vida moko luana ukutu. And the Bible tells us that the number is numerous. They are like sons on the seashore. Abantu wano baibu omwendo mungi nyo gulingo musenyu kunyandi. It is a number that is uncountable. Omwendo tosobola guba. But they come to do what? To make war. After 1,000 years of peace, he brings the war agenda back. He brings domination back. He wants to take territory. He's bringing nations back to capture Israel. And it is at that point the Bible says that there came a fire from heaven and it destroyed all the armies that were gathered for war. And the devil was captured again. Arrested. And this time he is put in the lake of fire. Look at this. We again don't see any war, protracted war. We don't see a war in the heavenlies. What we see is him mobilizing and then what happens next? He's captured. Think about it. So when you see this, it should bring your conscience and your focus on what is happening here. One on the love of God. Two on the mercy of God. Why, why does God want you to show him what is in your heart? So that you get to the point where you understand that without God, I am nothing. And then turn to him. So that he makes you what he wants you to be. They are no self-made men. No. God knew you before you were formed. He has an assignment for your life. Therefore, you are not here by accident. You are here to fulfill the purposes of God. You are here to live your life to the glory of God. Therefore, don't let the enemy of our souls deceive you with this gut feeling. Don't let the enemy of your soul deceive you that it, you will follow you what your heart is leading you to The heart is wicked. It is deceitful beyond measure. That is a, an unregenerated heart. When the heart is regenerated, then you are led by the Spirit of God. And then you are not following your 
your gut feeling. You are not following your unregenerated heart. You are following the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's why Paul tells us then, in the book of Romans, that as many as are led by the Spirit, these are the children of God. That's the distinguishing factor. God's children are led by His Spirit. God's children are not led by their heart. God's children are not led by God. Feeling. The Spirit of the Lord leads God's children. Praise be to God. Amen. Having understood that, we then come back to the devil. And then we see two names come through in that old time. We see Gog and Magog. Gogi ne Magogi. Whom we see in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So why the names appearing right now? Because these names represent the two antagonistic forces against Israel. So the forces of the end time will rise in the same spirit of Gog and Magog with the intention of destroying God's people. Which comes back to what Jesus said in John 10, 10. That the thief, although then he's talking about, or in essence he's talking about, then he's talking about the shepherd. But in context, he brings it to the chief protagonist, who is the devil. Symbolically. And says the thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That agenda has not changed for the devil. Jesus says in his word, I am come that you may have life and have it more abundant. So life is not in the abundance of things. The abundance of things is not the representation for life. John clarifies in one of the letters and says, he who has the son has life. Life is found in the Son. And the Son is Jesus Christ. So the abundant life that you desire, the abundant life that your heart yearns after, is found in Jesus Christ. That's where the true meaning of life is. That is where the future is secure for you and I. Praise be to God. And the Bible says when the devil is captured, he is thrown in the lake of fire. Remember, the lake of fire already has candidates there. We saw previously that the beast or the Antichrist and the prophet, the one who taught nations to follow after the image of the beast, had already been arrested again for the same conflict around Jerusalem. And they were thrown into the lake of fire alive. Now, the Bible says 
the devil is arrested and is also thrown in the lake of fire. In order to uh, eliminate any understanding of where exactly he is, the Bible says he is thrown in the lake of fire. With the beast and the prophet. You see, I met a certain saying which said, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. That is again arrogance and ignorance. You see, we think the devil has made us believe that Hell is his project, or the lake of fire is his project. It is not, and he is not in charge. Hell and the lake of fire is God's project for the disobedient. And the lake of fire, we now see the candidates. Now it is three in number. First went the, the beast and the prophet. Now this, the Bible says, were alive. So they are not dead. So, being thrown into the lake of fire, they are feeling every sensation that comes with fire. Their bodies are such that they are not perishing. Now the devil is thrown in to join them. The other two have been there for a thousand years. So while the devil is incarcerated in prison in the bottomless pit, these ones are already facing the music. Now he joins them. The ones he gave power to deceive nations. And look at how the Bible concludes this. It says they will be tomented. They are not going to be celebrated there. It is not a sauna. It is a place of torment. And the Bible says they are tormented day and night. Never a second. Never a minute. Never an hour goes by without them being tormented. Now think about this. And the Bible says night and day there is no rest. There is no break. There is no moment of relief. It happens day and night forever and ever. The point is this. In the end, Satan loses. So, if I were you and have not given my life to Jesus, this is the moment. You have seen where it all ends. For Satan and all his followers. Today, you can choose to be on the winning side. Jesus Christ and become an overcomer both in this world and in the world to come. We saw previously that those that overcome become part of the first resurrection and therefore they are not subject to the second death. They will not suffer torment because Jesus has overcome. If you have never given your life to Jesus, God's mercy and love 
is extended to you today. Invite Jesus in your life. Believe in him. Your destiny will be changed forever. Why don't you say this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your son, I thank you for the gift of salvation. Lord, I am a sinner. Unworthy of your love. Unworthy of your grace. Unworthy of your mercy. Lord, here I am before you. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and he rose again on the third day and he will come again on this earth to reign for a thousand years. Therefore, Lord of glory, I ask that you forgive my sins, that you wash away every taint of sin upon my heart. Forgive me, Lord. Purify my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Empower me to live a holy life. To live a life that pleases you. To live a life that is aligned to your purpose and will for my life. Save me, O Lord. I thank you. And I receive that salvation. I receive that salvation. That is by faith and not by works. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for giving me a new beginning. Thank you for empowering me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen Amen. and amen. If you have prayed this prayer from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. There is that number on the screen. Please call that number. Someone will pick it up and instruct you in the first steps on this wonderful journey of salvation. It is an exciting one whereby on, after this time on earth you get into eternal bliss with the Lord our Savior never to die again. Salvation is yours. Salvation is your portion. And today you are a child of God. In the few minutes that we have, I want to encourage someone, you who is going through the challenges of life, and what you are facing now does not look like what you anticipate. I'm here to encourage you that what you are facing is temporary. It too is going to pass. Because God's word never fails. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. The darker it gets, the closer it gets to morning. Your time of morning your time of mourning is coming to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, receive that word right now because your life is getting a turnaround. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because no word proceeds from your mouth that is void. You follow it to accomplish it. Therefore, 
I pray by your spirit that may the shackles of bondage be broken from that one that is here in Gaza right now. King of glory, may the fatness around their neck cause the yoke to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, I thank you because with you all things are possible. The impossible is becoming possible in their lives. A voice of testimony is coming upon them. Their yoke of death is broken. Their yoke of sickness is broken. Their yoke of lack is broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Lord, I thank you. Because it is being brought not by might, not by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and Amen. So, God richly bless you. From Dominion Church, till we meet again next week, we say shalom because you are now on the winning side. In the end, Jesus yes. wins. God bless you.